Hello again guys, welcome to Tech It Easy. I am Alex and today we are going to be looking at the M65 RGB Elite mouse from Corsair. I probably won't go over the IQ software much today as I went over that in my keyboard video which I will link somewhere around here. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, it really really helps me out and it also means that you don't miss any of the latest tech news. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, so you've just had a really good look at the Corsair M65 Elite mouse in white. Jumping into some of the specs, it has a native 18,000 DPI adjustable in one DPI resolution steps. So that means you can be as precise as you want to. You can set it to 662 or 1432, anything you want. It gives you total sensitivity customization. That along with ultra accurate tracking makes it the perfect companion for FPS gaming. Now this is a tunable mouse. Its advanced tunable weight system allows you to adjust your mouse's center of gravity or reduce the weight to just 97 grams. As far as lighting zone goes, it has two lighting zones, one at the rear and one by the mouse wheel. And if you want customizable keys, this is your mouse. It has eight fully programmable buttons, but that does include the left and right click and the mouse wheel. So really the only ones you are likely to change is the ones on the uh, left hand side of the mouse. Now this is also where the sniper button happens to be located. Sniper buttons are usually used to drastically reduce the DPI for as long as you hold down the button, which of course is handy when you're using a sniper. It's these kind of features on mice which make people favour PC gaming over console gaming, in my opinion. So definitely a strong one to have on a mouse. Now as well as using this for gaming, I actually find it quite helpful when I'm doing product Activity stuff. So when I'm in Photoshop and I need to be a bit more precise when I'm masking something, I actually find it really helpful to slow my DPI down by holding down this button. This along with the aesthetics of the mouse, I think makes the perfect gaming slash productivity mouse. It does have some of those brushed aluminium features that the keyboard did. And as I mentioned then, again, it's the perfect balance between a sort of gamery look and a more professional look, especially the white version. So how does this compare to other similar mice? Well, I used to own a Mad Cat's Rat Tournament Edition gaming mouse, which had a very similar build, but it was a little bit more exaggerated if you like. But I have to say that it felt very cheap and the sensitivity for me just wasn't there. This mouse has been a lot more consistent, which is strange because the Mad Cat's Rat Tournament Edition gaming mouse was actually more money. So that is something to bear in mind. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick sound test for you now, just so you can get an idea for how loud it would be. Okay, so that was the sound test. I really think it's quite a subtle mouse, which is desirable. So similar to the keyboard I reviewed not too long ago, which I will link somewhere on the screen now or in the description, you can use the IQ software to customize the lighting. If you own other Corsair products, you can make them all work in unison, which is a really, really nice feature, especially for those RGB fans. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the IQ software by now or something similar similar but I thought I'd show off how it works on this mouse in particular. 
as I mentioned earlier it has two main lighting zones and you can just flick between them and try out some of the effects. When changing through the effects you'll get a nice little virtual representation on screen. I will say though it doesn't really show the back bit very well because the back part of the mouse is actually quite bright on your desk. So the big question should you buy this mouse? For the current price of $59.99 yeah I'd definitely go and buy it. I think the build quality is solid, the customization options that you have off the bat are brilliant and I could honestly see myself using this mouse for a very long time and as I mentioned earlier it seems to suit that sort of mid ground so between productivity and gaming it is perfect for me and I know I'm not the only one who's going to need a mouse for both those things and of course you have it in that white option which again is brilliant for those trying to uh, follow a specific theme for their setups. I honestly couldn't find anything I didn't like about this mouse. I currently have a Corsair Scimitar as well and I much much prefer this one. It's a lot more comfortable in the hand and again the build quality seems a lot more solid than the Corsair Scimitar. If I was to offer any more advice then I would say consider what you need in a mouse first. This is a great mouse and can be used as a great all-rounder but if you're just needing a mouse purely for productivity purposes then perhaps something like the MX Master Mouse would be a better choice for you or consider what sort of games you're going to be playing. Perhaps an FPS mouse isn't going to cut it for you. Maybe you need more of a MMO mouse, such as the Corsair Scimitar. Just something to bear in mind when you go out looking for a mouse. If Corsair were watching, I would only ask for one thing, and that is that they consider bringing out more models of their mice in different colors. I think Razer are definitely on the right track doing this with their Quartz, Mercury and Black editions. Nothing major, just more of a preference. Okay, so that's that. I personally really, really like the mouse and I definitely will be using it for a very, very long time. Let me know what you thought in the comments section. Again, guys, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. It really, really helps me out. Soon, I'm going to have a big video showcasing uh, an all-white setup, so stay tuned for that. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.